everyone, it's Ari and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Alright, so if you have not seen my um, first official video, I highly suggest you go ahead and watch that one before you watch this one just to get a little idea of what this channel is going to be like. Come back to this video when you finish that one. Okay. So as Christians, it is so important for people to know that we're Christians by our fruit. Our fruit is what separates us from the world. That is how we are seen. That is how people know the difference between who truly is a Christian and who isn't a Christian. So we're going to just go through this series of going through the fruit of the Spirit. And it's so important to have the fruit of the spirit. I'm working on mastering the fruit of the spirit. And this is things that I've thought about, things that I've read, things that I've prayed about, and I've just felt encouraged and I wanted to share with you guys. So this is going to be part one of a nine part series going through all the fruits of the spirit. To make sure you see all nine parts, click the bell to get notified when I post a new video. And I mean, subscribe <laughs> and come along on this journey things first. We need to know what fruit means in this context. And I thought this was actually like really cool. And I looked it up in the Oxford Dictionary because I never really thought about it this way. But the fruit or the fruit is a result, reward of a work or activity. So the fruit is a result of the Holy Spirit working in us. And because we have the Holy Spirit working in us, the fruit of the Spirit should be a result of us. So if you are a Christian, you should have the Holy Spirit. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to have these fruits. And you can be lacking in some areas. You can be really strong in one and lacking in the other. So we're just going to dive into one by one and just learn about each. So let me first read to you Galatians 5 verse 22 through 23. I'm reading from the NLT version. I suggest that you get your Bible and read along. Never ever just take what somebody says and take it as being true, okay? You have to do the research for yourself. That is so, so, so important to do your own research. So that out of the way, let's read it. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So there are nine fruits of the Spirit. And the first one we're going to be talking about is... Ooh, that drops everything. The first one we're going to be talking about is love. Love is very important love covers a multitude of sin love is patient love is kind you know the love chapter first corinthians 13 and love is just as a christian we need to have love so let me if i'm looking down i'm looking at my notes because if i don't have notes i'm going to go on a tangent and it's just going to be a really long video that's unnecessary so like I said before, as, as a Christian, it is so important for us to love. First, love the Lord God with all of our heart, our soul, and our mind. That is found in Matthew 22 through 37. And then it continues on to say, love your neighbor as yourself in Matthew 22, 39. So first, we need to love the Lord with all of our heart, our soul, and our mind. And then to love our neighbor as ourselves. Love needs to affect everything we do from the things we say and the way we act love is a love is a verb it's love is an action you can say i love you but you need to show that i love you and that's important and as a christian we need to love everyone even if you disagree with people even if like uncle joey says chocolate cake is the best cake in the whole wide world and you're like no chocolate cake is disgusting vanilla cake vanilla cake um that was a really weird um example but okay you and your uncle joey disagree on that but does that mean you don't love your uncle joey joey of course not you still love your uncle joey because you know just because you disagree on something doesn't mean you don't love that person that you're a hater because you disagree that is like a silly 
silly excuse. That is like, I think that is so silly that someone says, you don't love me just because I disagree with you. Like, are you serious? Just because I disagree with you does not mean I don't love you. So keep that in mind. Okay, it is so easy to love people who love us. Like, I love my parents. I mean, my parents love me, I love my parents. I love my siblings. My siblings love me, I love my siblings. I love my friends and my friends love me. But what about that annoying classmate? The overbearing boss, that rude customer at your job, or just what about those people who are considered enemies? What about those people? It's all very hard to love people that don't love you and who are mean, who are nasty, who are ugly towards you. It is very hard to love them. But as Jesus says in Matthew 5 44, but I say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So, Jesus is giving us a commandment to love our enemies, those who hurt us, those who do us harm. And Jesus is a great example of loving your enemies because we didn't put Jesus as enemies to begin with. And why we were still his enemies, why we were still sinners who died on the cross. And so, he's a great example of how we should love. So, first, remember that we need to love God first with all of our heart or soul and mind. Because if we love God with all of our heart or soul and mind, it will just pour out. <laughs> because we love because He first loved us. That's First John four nineteen, and that is why we love because He loved us first. Okay, God loved us first. He just poured down His love on us, and we are just overflowing. We are overflowing. So I'm gonna share love with you and you and you and you and you. And it's just gonna overflow into everything we do. So that's very important. That we love God with all of our hearts and our mind, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. So that is really good witness for someone who is not a Christian. If somebody is mean and nasty to you, and all you are is kind and loving, you will confuse the heck out of them. Because it is so countercultural to love. Our enemies they will be like what I was I was just mean to you and you're like mm, yeah, I, I love you and uh, Jesus loves me I love you I love you with the love of Jesus and I'm gonna keep pouring that on you and they'll be like why 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 why, why do you love me why I'm so mean and nasty and like, like I said before because Jesus loved me Jesus died for me and I want to share that love with everyone around me so <laughs> be mean to me all you want I'm still gonna love you and then you're gonna continue to be that light and you're gonna open the door for more questions and then then you'll be able to present the gospel and then hopefully they will be saved and that would just <laughs> that is just so exciting it just blows my name so love is a necessity love is a necessity and it is so important we need to love other people we need to be shown love and we need to show it to other people so pour out yourself daily and just love it's so hard to love people though especially when you are upset and you're angry when they've been mean to you but remember you were jesus we were god's enemy first and he still loved us so love your enemies pray for the people who persecute you i really struggled there's just there was this one person in my life who i did not love they were my quote-unquote enemy they got on my nerves so they really knew how to get under my skin and i really brought i brought it to the lord's attention i was like lord i want to love this person you brought into my life i want to love them please help me love them and you know i pray that god would bless them they would have good days and that they would grow closer to him and i finally lost that hatred for that person and i finally been able to love that person now we we don't always get along and sometimes this person will still do things that'll be just just a little bit annoying but i refocus i reset my mindset and like i'm going to love so remember that love god first love your neighbor love your enemies and god opens the door for the gospel and and it's, it's like it's exciting if you love 
nobody can use anything against you. And that's what I love about it. Because if somebody's being mean and nasty to you, but you just continue to be kind and loving to them, they can't, they can't do anything. They can't say anything. Well, they were mean to me. No, 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 I wasn't. No, you weren't. Because you were showing love the whole time and you were showing love. So they can't really do anything. They can't do anything against you. They can't have anything held against you. They can't say, oh, you did this to me when you show love. So remember, love is a necessity. Love makes the world go around. We need to show love. And remember not to love the way the world tells you to love. Because the world's way to tell you to love is wicked. The, world, the world's way in anything is wicked. We need to have this mindset. Love the way God loves. God loves us by just giving himself up for us. It's sacrificial love. We need to have that love and to give it and show it to everyone around us. So remember, first, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor. Love your enemies. Remember that love is a necessity. We need love. And remember to love the way God has loved us and love the way the world and I highly suggest that you memorize Galatians 5, 22 through 23, so you know all the fruits of the Spirit. And I'm actually going to work on that as well. Because, you know, I can say it, but I'm not confident in it. I, I want to be more confident in it. And I highly suggest that you memorize Matthew 5, 44. That's a really good one. You know, remember, especially with your enemies, when you're thinking about your enemies, thinking about your enemies, remember, pray for them. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Memorize Matthew 22, 37 and 39. And I suggest you go through after this video and read through the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, that shows all the qualities that love has. Love is patient. Love is kind doesn't keep any records of wrong it just that is a really good one if you love somebody you won't keep a record of wrongs i suggest you um memorize that too i will try my very best to memorize that too so i guess that what should we have verses of the week for each video because we're going through that would be nine verses that would be nine verses that you've hidden in your heart yes let's do that um i should have thought of this beforehand but which which first okay here's the thing what verse should we do? Because we're already going to mem memorize Galatians 5, 22 through 23, so that, that we're not counting that one. We're going to memorize something else. Um, what's something hard for us to do? Matthew 5, 44, but I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Memorize that verse. Love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 5, 44, but I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. That is your memory verse. That is the verse that you need to hide in your heart this week as you focus on love. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if it blessed you, if it encouraged you, share with a friend and don't forget to click the bell to get notified when I post a new video. Like and subscribe. Comment down below when you show love to an enemy or, or you're working on showing love to an enemy. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!